One thing that I want you all to understand and think about is that the, with the Industrial Revolution, uh, when basically humans started to get the sense of, hey, machines are coming in, machines are doing everything, uh, you know, as soon as that started to happen, inevitably, art had to change. Art, um, and I'm, I'm going to relate art to what we're discussing, just because it's, you know, it applies to Cummings in a very direct way. Um, the second that, first of all, photography came about, uh, one thing that I want you all to think about is that with the invention of photography, all of a sudden you had the ability for mankind to instantly take a scene and have it per perfectly rendered on a piece of paper. And all of a sudden you have all these painters that have spent their whole lives uh, trying to render something in perfect form, you know, and, you know, all of a sudden, they didn't become obsolete, but it sort of, all of a sudden there was this shift, like, okay, what, what is my purpose, you know? Is it, is it still the purpose of a painter to render a subject with perfect uh, accuracy? Well, with the invention of photography, you know, the answer to that, for a lot of people, had to be no. And so it's almost like you're taking something, you're taking a craft, and you're trying to push it another direction. He wasn't this guy that was like, ah, you know, regular poetry, ah, it's boring, let's do something totally crazy and uh, ignore the rules. He wasn't that guy. He basically, I think there's, the quote is that, in order to be a master of modern freeform poetry, one has to master meter poetry. It's some quote like that. And that's very much in the spirit of uh, Pablo Picasso because you know, here's this guy that a lot of people don't even, you look at Picasso's earlier work, and there are these amazing realistic pictures, you know, and he, it, it's almost like he's considered so great because he mastered that and then he took it somewhere else. So I remember being in the MIMA uh, in New York and looking at, uh, I think the painting is called Le uh, Mademoiselle d'Avignon, and it's, it's all those, it's when he first took uh, you know, this portrait of all these people, all these, there's all these women together, and, you know, you look at these women and they're, they're these mangled forms and sort of this real archaic type of um, subject matter, and it's not realistic, it's kind of jagged and, and striking, it's crazy. So there's this big canvas in front of me, and I'm sitting here marveling at it. I'm, I'm, just looking at it in awe, and I'm, I'm within this room full of people that, you know, just room full of people by room full of people, people are amazed at this painting. And I, I remember sitting there in awe and thinking to myself, my goodness, since the 20s, this huge canvas has been sitting in front of roomfuls of people and roomfuls of people just wide-eyed and in awe. But nowadays it happens so fast, sort of the cultural norm, it just shifts. So much happens in a decade. But when we, when we take that and then we, you know, sort of spread it all the way since the 20s, and people have been fe feeling like the modern man for that long, imagine what that must feel like, uh, you know, when you're, when you're writing in this age. So, you know, in the 70s we have the hippies. All right, and so the hippies sort of, you know, they, they, they felt, you know, like they, they understood a sense of life that, you know, wasn't the norm then. And so in the, in the early 60s and the, the 50s, you had the beat poets. And, you know, I can sort of, you can sort of see something like that. That's a similarity. And then before that, you have, and, and this time, you have poets like Cummings, and you have, you know, an influence of Cummings was Ezra Pound, and uh, you have Gertrude Stein, and sort of thinkers that uh, sort of thought outside the box and visualized this different sort of society. And before that, you know, you had the transcendentalist poets in the 19th century. So this whole sense of uh, individualized thinking has always existed. You know, can y'all think of what that sector of the population might be nowadays? Has anyone ever had that thought to themselves, like, you know, you're in the middle of it all and it's quite beautiful, but you think to yourself, my goodness, this entire production, this entire day is, you know, 
thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, and it's just, it's all for the look of it. It's all, this whole thing is going to pass in a matter of like three or four hours. Yeah, go ahead. Sing of Olaf, glad and big, whose warmest heart recoiled at war, a conscientious object, or his well-beloved colonel, Trig West Pointer, most succinctly bred, took Aaron Olaf soon in hand, but through a host of overjoyed non-coms, first knocking on the head him, do through icy waters roll that helplessness with other stroke with brushes recently employed and then this muddy toilet bowl, whose kindred intellects evoke allegiance per blunt instruments, Olaf being to all intents a corpse and wanting any rag upon which God unto him gave, responds without getting annoyed, I will not kiss 